Today we're going to be launching a brand new concept on my channel. Welcome to the first of the five year plans. Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. I'm Frankly FM84 and today we're going to be launching a brand new concept on my channel where we jump in to the five year plan. So if you're brand new here, a very warm welcome. If you're not new here and you've come across from one of my saves, maybe from Woodgate Valley or from Buriram United and an Englishman abroad, a very warm welcome back to the channel to you too. So, as I said, what we are going to be doing today is a five-year plan where we are going to take over one club, jump in for five years and get as successful as we can, as quickly as we can. So, I'm excited to announce, and as you may have guessed from the intro, the first team we are going to have a go at the five-year plan with is Red Bull Bragantino. They're a team that I recently recommended in a video for the FM Network as part of their interesting saves concept idea. And I thought, what better way to prove that they're an interesting idea and concept than to go and take them over and make a success of them myself. So then, if you're interested in the concept and are wondering how this is going to work, we are going to be working towards a simple set of five rules. The rules are as follows. So, number one, each episode is going to be one season. So we're not going to get into the long-winded thing of doing eight, nine episodes a season. What we're going to do is play through a season, come back at the end with the season review, and basically go back and cherry-pick the highlights that we've got and go over any successes that we might have achieved during that one season. The idea is to keep the series as compact as possible, to get in, do the five years, and then maybe move on to the next club. So in at number two, I'll be using a plug and play tactic. I have tried and failed miserably to construct tactics of my own and keep them working consistently. So I thought, what better way than to just cheat and steal one? Uh, no shame in it, really. Okay, maybe there is, but Oh well. Uh, number three, we are going to build for the future with under 23 players. So with a team like Red Bull Bragantino, they have a good youth system anyway, so they're going to have a lot of players in development. What it means is that we will use those players, but any players that we are going to add on to the club are players with good potential who are going to come in and maybe enhance the first team straight away. Rule number four, the club cannot get into any debt at any point. So if there's no transfer funds, we don't buy players. If there's no wage funds, then we aren't going to be able to sign players either. So oh, always work within your means. Don't bankrupt a club for the sake of bankrupting a club. No instalment deals that we can't stick to, etc. Uh, number five, the save will end at five years. If we can't make a success of a team within five years, I don't think we should be at that team anyway. And if we are doing a terrible job and manage to get the sack before then, the save and this portion of the five-year plan will end at that point. So that's the rules covered. The next thing to do is jump on into the game, have a look at the first team squad, have a look at the finances and show off the tactic that we are going to be using. So let's jump on in and have a look at all of those things. Okay then, so here we are at the Red Bull Bragantino homepage. First thing we are going to do is have a little look at the squad, jump on into the team report. As you can see, this is the 11 that the assistant has picked out for us. He feels that this is the lineup we should be going with. We have got Clayton in goal. He's a sound goalkeeper, looks good for the level that we're playing at, has all the attributes in the right places. I don't think we're going to need to improve there too much. We've got Fabricio Bruno. He's a again a solid centre back who I think is a good base for a spine of the team. He has good heading, jumping reach, tackling, can read the game well, work rate is good as well. In the midfield, we've got Lucas Evangelista to play in front of him, and he looks like a sound central midfielder. He can play as a deep line playmaker or even an advanced playmaker. We can put him in a number of positions, and I think he will be a player that we can rely on in the save. In terms of the attacking positions, we've got Artur on the left. He is a sound, solid, quick, agile player. We're going to look to play on that and use him to his strengths, help us out in the attack and then on the opposite side to that we have Claudinho 
And again, he is a quick, nimble player who they're going to look to exploit his uh, strengths and hopefully have him assist and score goals to help us early on in the save. And then up front, we've got Alarandro, who looks a sound striker. Hasn't yet been called up to any of the Brazilian teams, but he's only 20, so there's plenty of room for improvement. He is quick, he has good finishing, good technique, and I think he's a solid player for us to be able to build a team around. So the next thing to look at will be the finances. So as you can see, we have £4.8 million in the bank. 2.7 of that is available to spend. And we have a wage budget of 97285 which is currently all being spent. Um, looking at the squad, I think we've got a few or a couple of players that are over the age of 30. So maybe move some of them on, bring some younger players in, some under 23 players as is in the rules. And hopefully improve the squad without breaking the bank. And then finally, onto the tactic. As I touched on, not the greatest at making tactics. So for the purpose of a five-year plan, what we are going to do is steal one. So we have turned to probably the best in the business, Nap, and we have stolen Nap's Echoes. Uh, this is built for the match engine 21.7, which is what we are going to use. And it is basically a 4-2-3-1 and it fits the system that we are looking to play. It has a positive mentality, plays with Tiki Taka, so we're going to have lots of the ball and use those wingers and one inverted forward as best we can and try and get the best out of this team because it's young, it's fresh, and with the under-23s that we're going to look to bring in, hopefully it's going to be a success. So with all that covered, what we're going to do is jump in the time machine, go forward to the end of this first season, and then come back and celebrate the successes or commiserate the sorrows of not being as successful as we think. I've got a feeling that we're going to do well in this save and basically have a roundup of that first season as a first season review and then tick off the first year of the five year plan. So I'll be back with you at the end of this season. OK, so we are back. The date is now the 7th of December 2021, which means we have successfully worked our way through our first season in the five year plan. We are going to start off by looking at the competitions tab and see how we have got on. We're going to start in the main Serie A, where you can see that we achieved a sixth place finish. That was actually pretty decent. We had spells where we were higher than that. We were third in the league at one point, but a dreadful run of form towards the end of the season made sure that we dropped. We still exceeded the board's expectations, who didn't think that we would actually qualify for the Copa Libertadores. So that is a big bonus. They are happy about that. If we have a look through the breakdown of the games, managed to win 19 games and some really bizarre results where we were smashing teams 4 nils and there's a few 3-1s there, a 4-1, a 5-3. We drew six games, most of them high scoring, 3-3 three, three draws. The Brazilian league seems to be really, really crazy for its score draws. And then we lost 13 games where, again, there were some really bizarre results in there with some 5-1s, five 5-2s. Five I think there was even a 5-3 thrown in. So pretty inconsistent form there meant that we... Had a sixth place finish. It, it's good. It's progress for a newly promoted team who have the backing of Red Bull. I think that sixth place in the first season is a decent start. So looking at some of the stats from the league campaign, you can see there Alarandro finished in joint second on 18 goals. So that was a decent start and we were right to judge him as a player to build the team around at the start of the save. Looking across into the assist category, Claudinho, we were right about him too. He was going to be dangerous coming in off of that right-hand side. We used him to his strengths and he bagged 12 assists. Artur was a player that, again, we highlighted before the start of the save. He managed to get seven player of the match awards. Fabricio Bruno, I know, although he was solid at the back, he was quite inconsistent. He's on the list for 11 yellow cards. Mateus Bueno, who was a sign-in, we will get to that in a little bit he managed to cover 14.13 kilometers per 90 minutes which is quite impressive and is a hard-working player so that rounds out the stats for the main league Serie A we are now going to move on to the schedule so you can see exactly where things were a little bit shaky so scrolling down to the main league 
We started off the season with a brilliant win, 3-1 against Corinthians, which is right at the top here. We then had a 3-3 draw against Palmeiras before a 4-2 loss to Flamingo. And then the story of the season really started to unfold. So we go on and win the next three games. We then draw one, then lose one. Then we will win three games, draw one, then lose one. Then we lost. And then it started to be a little bit patchy where we would win a game against Goyas here. Then we lost to Santos and beat Mineiro and lose to Sao Paulo. And that was basically the story of the season where inconsistency just robbed us. We were up at third place at some points in the season and basically couldn't maintain that because we just could not keep the run of games going. Towards the end of the season, we did have a little push where we had these four wins in a row against Botafogo, Goianese, Fluminense and Sierra. And that was all looking good. And I thought we're going to finish in the top three. And then all of a sudden we go and lose four on the spin against Gremio, Santos, Atletico Mineiro, Sao Paulo. And then we did end the season with a 3-1 win against Bahia, which is a positive. I mean, overall, the season is a good season. We finished sixth. And as I said, in the stats part of the video, uh, we were expected to finish mid-table after being promoted. So a, a sixth-place finish is better than what the board wanted. So in the other competition that we took part in, which was the Paulista Serie A1, we actually won our first piece of silverware of the save, where we got all the way through to the final stage and beat Santos over two legs, 3-0 on aggregate. It was a very, very good performance in both of those games, especially the away leg where we managed to win 2-0. If we dive into those stats a little bit. Leo Ortiz was the top scorer in this section of the season. Um, Claudinho again pops up with nine assists, so he's really solid coming in from that right wing. Haydar and Raul are top of the Naughty Boys list with seven and six yellow cards each. Uh, Vitinho is the one that pops up here with 14 kilometers covered, which is a good hard working amount again. And then Claudinho Pops up down in the bottom right with 0.92 dribbles per 90 minutes. So again, if we go over and look at the schedule, you can see that we're a lot more consistent in this competition. I know that the quality of competition may not be as good as the main Serie A, but we still have to win these games. So again, we started off getting beat 4-1 by Santos, but we had the last laugh, luckily. But then we bounced back in style by winning 5-1, 7-1, 2-0 before then having a little wobble with a couple of draws and a loss against Corinthians. We then were in the cup competitions. We had a 5-0 win there for a 5-1 win against Botafogo in the league. And then we pushed on against Ituano, where we won 4-0 in the second round of the cup. We then continued our good run of form in the league, where we were having some crazy games. We had a 5-1 win here, a 6-2 win in the next game after that. And then we rounded out the first part of the Paulista Serie A1 with a loss here against Guarani, which qualified us in fourth place, which put us through into the quarterfinals, which was what the board wanted. That was the expectation. And then after that, we didn't look back. We had a 2-2 draw with Palmeiras in the quarterfinals, which we won on penalties. And then we had a crazy game against Corinthians, also finishing 2-2, where we also won on penalties. And then we had that two-legged affair against Santos, where we won 1-0 in the home leg. And then we went to Santos and won 2-0, which was brilliant because the lads all performed fantastically. So the next area we are going to be looking at are the transfers. So as I said at the start, we are working to the budget, not trying to bankrupt the club at all. So we were quite frugal with the money to begin with, although we do have a moment later on in the season where you will see for some reason the club ran out of wing-backs, so we had to go and buy quite a few, which we'll get to that in a minute. So the first couple of signings that we made were developmental signings, really, both Brazil under-19 internationals. So Juan is a player that we got from Sao Paulo for £850,000. He's yet to make an appearance for the club, but he came highly recommended. Gabriel Silva is another one that we signed for 675000 from Palmeiras. And again, he's a 19-year-old Brazilian under-19 international. And 
they are players that we are looking to develop into the future first teamers, which is what the board wanted us to do. We had a few players leave, so we had Liga go out to Alcadia for 110,000. Bruno Tubaro went to Orlando City on loan. Edimar also went to the MLS to play for FC Dallas, and following him also to the MLS uh, was Adelan, who went to Atlanta United for 400,000. And then the current season that's just finished. So we brought in, again, quite a few players that are on the younger side and players who we are looking to push into the first team. So Iago Mendonca is a centre-back who can also play as a right-back. He came in at a cost of 140000 from Goyas via another club on loan. Mateus Bueno, who we mentioned as the covering the distance per 90 minutes stat, He's a player who I'm looking forward to seeing how he turns out. He's 23 and he cost 105000 from Coritiba. He, he's a bit of a bargain, really. He's a player who's going to turn into a quality player for the club. We signed Vicente Poggi. He is a Uruguayan who has come in from Defensor Sporting for 875000 Again, we scouted him and the rating that come back from the scouts was quite high. He's come from a club that has a good youth academy, so hopefully he's going to be one that turns out to be a future first teamer. Elias Arias is one of those wingbacks that I mentioned we are about to go through the wingback phase. Uh, doesn't look fantastic. Did have a good reputation in terms of the scout report, but doesn't seem to have kicked on really. He's not been at the club long enough to have developed then John Aramburu come from the same club again come via the skating report he seems to have quite a lot more potential than his former teammate only cost 91,000 from Venezuela so he's one of those that can plug in and play at wing back Pedro Ibanez come from Melgar I think and he's Peruvian he's another right back Again, bargain 135,000. He's one that we are going to look to develop. And you'll see in a moment when we look at the club expectations and vision that these are players that are going to fit into that perfectly. We also signed Paulo Reina. He is a left back who came from the same club, Melgar. Cost £200,000. He's played 18 times for the first team and bagged an assist and a goal. And then the last player that we brought in was Gabriel Mahela. He cost 160,000 from Fluminense by Villanova via Fluminense on loan. So those are the players that came in. Only one player has gone out, Italo. Caused a bit of a problem at the start of the season and then wanted to leave. So couldn't arrange a permanent transfer, but we sent him out to Penarol on loan. So that's the transfers worked out for the season. OK, so a quick look at the club finances. We managed to receive 3.4 million for finishing sixth in Serie A, which leaves our bank balance at a healthy 5.4 million. Of that, we have 2.3 to spend for the current season. And the good thing here is that the wage budget has gone up to 118,000 and we are only spending 74. So there is lots of manoeuvring room and we can be trying to attract the players that will improve the club going forwards. OK, so next we're going to go through a few of the emails from the end of the season. Have a look. As you can see here, we have our season review. The only thing is, I'm not too sure whether I missed it or whether the game doesn't do it for the Brazilian clubs, but it just says that we had a memorable season, defied all expectations and wrote a new chapter in the club's history. We won the competition, feel-good stories. As I said, we were peaked at third position and we ended up finishing sixth. It does say let's have a look at the highlights, but there are no actual highlights there so what we're going to do instead is try and break this down the old-fashioned way so when we go to the club vision and expectations meeting where well, this is what has been set for the upcoming season so we have to sign players now under the age of 22 for the first team that's something that we've been doing already and that is one of the goals of the five-year plan anyway do not sign players over the age of 30 Again, that fits perfectly in with what we are trying to do in terms of making the club ethos. And they want to play high tempo pressing football, which I believe Knapp's tactic is doing, as you can see, by the amount of goals that we scored and also the amount of goals that we conceded. 
So the five-year plan ongoing is to work within the wage budget to sign players to sell for a profit, to have a minimum of three-year contracts for first-team players. So basically, this is what I was saying about those wing-backs that we signed. So we've signed youth internationals for South American clubs, all of which have quite a good reputation according to the scouts. So hopefully we've brought them all in for small amounts. I do believe they all have... Um, south american club release clauses so hopefully if some of those get triggered those are the types of players that we are going to be buying in to sell for profit also with the transfer budget that we've been given we've got a certain area of the team that we are going to look to plug with that so i don't know if we can use that kind of money so it means that we might have already had those players in the team in terms of next season they want us to qualify for the sud americana which is good because that was the target this season that we managed to exceed that by uh, qualifying for the Libertadores. And then for this season's Copa Libertadores, they want us to reach the group stage at a minimum. Then my contract expires, which we will be re-signing, providing we don't get the sack. And then it just says to continue to qualify for the Sudamericana. So they want, or oh, they're not overly ambitious. They want us to keep, being just in that bracket below the top, which if that's all they want, that's fine. But I want to push on and I want to try and build a team that is going to go on and win this league. So let's move on and have a look at the seasonal performance analysis report. So here you can see that we are performing above average statistically. So in terms of XG per game, goals per game, uh, pass percentage, shots per game, and then we are slightly under the average for conceded per game. So I'm not too sure there whether that's a case of we didn't concede as many as I thought, or it actually tells us here, doesn't it? So the XG is 80.6, and our actual goals were 78, so that's pretty close. Uh, expected points was 68, we got 63. Our expected position would have been fourth and we finished sixth due to that really poor run of form at the end of the season. And then in terms of the defensive efficiency, it says we are way over here, quiet and leaky. So not too sure how we are under the average here, but then quiet and leaky over here. And then it says we were aggressive and clinical in terms of attacking and we are up here our attacking statistics are worth taking a look at so having gone through that end of season report it's very apparent that our quiet and leaky defense needs some improving with the wage and transfer budget that we have in the bank i think it's realistic to say that we can go out and buy the right players to plug the gaps at the back and prevent us being so quiet and leaky next season and that is season one in the books if you've enjoyed that, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the like button to let us know that you're enjoying the content. Also, if you want to stay up to date with everything that's going on across this save, my other saves, whether that be Woodgate Valley or an Englishman abroad, either in Thailand or out in Indonesia at Sulot United, again, hit the subscribe button is the only way to do that. So please consider doing that for the channel. That would help so much. A very big thank you for watching. I have been Frankly FM 84 and until the next one, take care everybody, stay safe.